Hey there guys, Mike here again. Thanks for clicking this video. This video is a follow-up of my 60 and 7 amp that I built a couple months ago. It's been running flawlessly and I'm really happy the way it turned out. Some of you had some questions on the build so I thought I'd elaborate on those and I'm also going to plan to do some mods. I picked up some NOS uh, 60 and 7 tungsten sole tubes. We're going to put some better filter capacitors in the power supply. I also picked up a choke. So we're going to put a choke in the power supply as well. And I picked up some audio grade capacitors. Now, if you watch the first video, you realize I had an issue with my coupling capacitors. So I actually purchased some higher grade capacitors. So we'll put those in and then we'll do a test and we'll see how everything works out for us. So let's talk about some of the questions that people had on this amplifier. One of the questions was, do I need a preamp? No, you don't need a preamp to run this amplifier. Um, I did make a separate one to give me some flexibility and some more uh, gain, but you don't need a preamp to run this amplifier. What you can do is go to this video on this preamp video and just take the potentiometer section of the schematic and just graph it onto the front part of that and it will work just fine. So the second question is all about the panel meter here. So I pulled out a couple different panel meters. People ask, do I need to have a panel meter? No, you don't need to run a panel meter in here. I just did it for kind of old time's sake because I said I wanted to make it look like a military device. What kind of panel meter should I get? Well, this panel meter runs on DC. So what you need to do is find something that that is around 100 milliamps, so zero to 100 milliamps DC. This amplifier draws about 60 milliamps, so that would be a perfect scale. I have two different ones here. One's a bigger one and one's a little smaller one like I put in here. So anything around between up to 100 milliamps is fine. If you have 150, 200 amps, would still work as well. Where in the circuit does the panel meter actually go? So the panel meter actually goes after the power supply unit before it branches off to the left and right channel. So I'll put a link in the description below of a new revision of the schematic and you can see exactly where it goes. Do I need to put DC on the heater circuit? No, you don't have to have DC on the heaters. You can get by with AC as well, but I do recommend doing some sort of voltage divider, either two 100 ohm resistors to ground or some type of voltage divider with a capacitor on one side. That seems to work very well. A lot of times people want to use these for headphone amps and you will hear some AC hum on the headphones if you want to do that. So I'd recommend if you want to use it for a headphone amp as well, you can. I would just recommend going DC heaters. So another question was, I cannot locate the 100 microfarad 450 volt power supply capacitors as you spec. Will 47 microfarad at 400 volts work? You could get by with the 47 microfarad capacitors. You might hear a little bit of a buzz or the AC ripple in it, but I would not recommend going with the 400 volts. I would stick to 450 or even 500 volt power supply capacitors because this amplifier has the capability of going above 400 volts and you don't want to go below that. So another question that comes up all the time is what resistor should I purchase for this circuit? Now in the bill of materials, I recommend the resistor. I think that would work well in each position, but if you have a trouble finding them, Basically, any resistor will work if you have the right wattage and the right voltage rating on it. Um, when I was getting into building amplifiers way back in the day before the internet, I used whatever I could get my hands on. Um, some resistors are more robust than others and some are more prone to inducing type of RF into the circuit. So what I've listed in the bill of material will work perfectly. I will do a follow-up video on what resistors would work good in each position of a circuit. Why no negative feedback? This amplifier has no global or local negative feedback. I find these tubes are linear enough and with this set design, I did not incorporate that. You can incorporate that. I find with like two A3s and 300 Bs and 45 tubes, they're so linear that you really don't need negative feedback. But if you want to incorporate it into the amplifier, you're more than welcome to. I find that this sounds just perfectly as it is and is loud enough for my shop that I don't need to do that. But if you want to, be my guest. Are you afraid that the circuit will overheat being enclosed like that? Well, I got my trusty little uh, heat gauge here. So we'll turn the amplifier on, let it run for an hour or so, and we will check the temperature and I'll show you how hot it actually gets. This amplifier has been running for a couple hours and we will just put it right over the top of the tubes because that's typically where it's the hottest. So it's 41 degrees Celsius. Let's just fix it over to Fahrenheit. And that's 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And over on the transformer side, it's not as hot, so about 97 degrees. So that seems to be manageable. 
So let's go ahead and swap these components in and see if we can hear an audible difference. But before I do that, I want to show you how the panel meter reacts right now without the choke in. I notice under heavy base passages that it actually bounced up and down and hopefully this choke will help smooth that out a bit. So this is a 10 Henry choke with 270 ohms and it's rated for 90 milliamps. So that's more than enough for this amplifier. So by installing this, I should get some better AC ripple rejection and it should help stiffen up the power supply. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's crank up this music here and I'll show you the needle bounce up and down. If I didn't have this panel meter, I wouldn't believe that that actually does this. So the meter's quite accurate and I've checked it with my multimeter and the current draw is exactly what the panel meter shows. So I would suspect by adding a choke, we should be able to stiffen that up a bit. And The amplifier all exposed and I do some work on it. I took my multimeter here just to confirm everything was zeroed out so there's no voltage on the power supply unit so it's all safe to work on. I do have a bleeder resistor there but you should always double check just in case. And that 270 ohm resistor there, that's what we're going to be removing and replacing it with the choke. The choke has the same DCR value of that. I did that by design because I wanted to see what the resistor would sound like compared to the choke. Those power supply capacitors there, those are just some cheap no-name brand ones that I had in my parts bin. I'm going to replace them with some better quality ones that are brand name and see if that actually helps with the AC ripple. And the coupling capacitors there, again, i replacing those with some audio grade capacitors and we'll see if that makes a difference as well. So all the wiring is done, got the new power supply capacitors in, I have the new filter choke in all wired up, and I got the new coupling capacitors in. I really like the way I did this standoff of the capacitors and it makes it really easy to swap capacitors in and out of your circuit. Alright, so let's hook up the speaker leagues and the power and give it a shot. So I have the amplifier hooked up to my little current sink here just in case I made a wiring mistake, but it fired right up, no problem. I have the filter choke mounted right in the back corner there away from the power transformer and perpendicular to the output transformer so nothing induces there. And it's drawn about 55 milliamps like it normally does. So let's go ahead and play the music like we did before and see how it sounds. So I'm just using my basic multimeter here to measure the hum and it's less than one millivolt as you can see here. That's virtually nothing. So everything's working flawlessly. I'm really happy with results. I'll let this burn in some more before I do some more critical listening. But from what I can hear right now, it sounds a little bit better. The app meter is still bouncing up and down a little bit, not as much as it was before. So I suspect it has more to do with the power transformer. And so maybe a future mod would be to be a larger power transformer, but I'm not gonna worry about that. But what I am gonna do in the next video is build a constant current source and put that on the input tube. So this is a constant current device. It's solid state. It gives a high impedance and a good ripple rejection. So it'll even be quieter than it was before. I'll put a link in the description below of this version of mods. So please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can see the future video of me installing the constant current source. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.